to where I started. That the trouble, and I'm not defending or holding brief for anybody, because I stand personally against corruption in whatever nature it takes. But the point I'm making is this, that we sometimes expect too much from the person called the president in how much he can do. Some of you may not remember, and I'm sure maybe some of you remember, there was a time when the president could order you to be detained. And that's it. End of story. And then you disappear incarcerated. There was a time when the president could say, do this to so and so and so and so. But now we have an independent judi judiciary. What happens in the judiciary? I don't know. I haven't practiced law in the courts for a very long time now. But what happens in the judiciary determines a lot about what would then happen about these issues that we discuss of corruption. Do you think that the new corruption. constitution is restricting the president in terms it of what indeed. he can achieve? It is indeed, because we have a what constitution. Would you, we have what a would you change to We cannot go back now. We cannot go back to, to, to the centralist system of government. I think we have moved on. We have moved on. We're not going back there. What we need to do, in my opinion, my very considered opinion, is to strengthen the institutions that we have, even as they're independent, make them very, very strong institutions and once we have strong institutions, each institution can be able to stand alone and say this is what's going to be done. Uh -huh. Because the DPP, for instance, is a very, very powerful office. Very powerful office. Mm -hmm. if, he should, if, if the EACC sends a file to the DPP, and the DPP's office, for the sake of argument, I'm saying this is what's happening, is compromised, then every work done by the EACC is for nothing.